today's episode, uh, we're going to have an epic battle report. So the uh, battle I've been kind of talking about, uh, we're finally, it's finally, the day's finally here. Um, I know I had a few more things left to do on the Spanish Galleon, uh, but whatever. Uh, I just wanted to get to this battle. Um, we can finish those at a later date. Um... Uh, so essentially, in this battle, it uh, features uh, the Spanish Galleon, which we've been working on in the, in the Plunder Den here. Uh, and a six-rate frigate that uh, that I have uh, posted pictures uh, of the construction of that uh, on my Instagram page, uh, also called the Plunder Den, uh, if you're interested in how I assembled that as well. Um, but uh, I've been trying to get these to complete it, to, to have this uh, epic battle and coincide with the... Uh, end of the uh blood and plunder world uh, community campaign um which you know ends on the on the 10th of september so i kind of wanted to get this uh this match in there before the end of it um so i'm just going to show you a little bit uh kind of like a pre uh pre-game kind of uh warm up here and uh kind of what's going on um so kind of familiar with the uh, the galleon here it is uh there's this card as you can see, uh, it's got a total of 28 uh, guns. So uh, in this match, all 28 guns are medium guns in this uh, ba uh, battle. So it's a 600 point match, which I needed to, to pay for all those cannons uh, and have a large crew on these ships. Um, and on the other hand, here's a six rate. Uh, also has uh, several guns as well. Uh, it is only uh, 18 cannons. I added additional two cannons to the top deck, um, which uh, puts it up to 20 medium cannons. And then I added an additional, I changed four of, uh, of my medium cannons, uh, sorry, into heavy cannons. Uh, so I have four heavy cannons uh, also uh, on this ship. Uh, so it is uh, it is fully uh, loaded and ready to rock. Um so I would say they kind of even even each other out. Uh, the galleon has more guns. Uh, six raid has more powerful guns. Um, but in in the turn, uh, I would say they're they're equal when it comes to uh, guns. They both have eight swivel guns. I included those, uh, so definitely for boarding action. Uh, and uh, you know I didn't want to leave anything on the side. Uh, I also added. Uh, um, special characters so each side has a sniper each uh, side has a master gunner a master sails uh, a sailor um so a sailing master sorry um so they're and they both have an officer so just in case you know john or juan gets killed <laughs> uh there's somebody to take uh, take over the uh, place of them on on the ship there first mate uh so here's the uh, juan's card here so juan corso uh he's got 16 command range um, he doesn't have broadside, which, you know, is kind of going to be a, a disadvantage. Uh, but he does have uh, Ruthless. Uh, and uh, they do have Vendetta. And, uh, and uh, the Spanish have a special rule Vendetta if they're fighting against the English, which they are in this match. Uh, so that'll uh, give him some help uh, there for sure. Uh, and then we got uh, uh, the one... Uh, Corso Corsairs. So that's that's the name of the faction. So uh, Casarios uh, are the one of the main uh, core units uh, of this uh, faction. And then we got over here, we got uh, John Morris. So remember in the last naval battle, uh, these two fought. Uh, and uh, it went to, it was uh, John Morris here was uh, fighting in the, in the uh, Corvette. Uh, and uh, Juan was in the Tartana. So you can remember that uh, that battle uh, went to a draw. So they got bigger ships this time. <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go all out in this one for the final battle. Um, and uh, uh, John does have broadside. So uh, with those heavy cannons, uh, good broadside could do some serious damage to that Spanish galleon. So we'll look for that, uh, uh, saving that uh, special ability for the right time. Right. Uh, and then uh, he is a uh, faction he's running is the uh, English uh, Buccaneers. Now both these I'm not going to cover all of them, but they both have special rules uh, that help them out in the in the game. Um, same with uh, John Morrison one. There's some other special rules I didn't cover. Uh, all those uh, characters that we add are adding special rules. So this is going to be a complicated match. There's a lot of special rules. 
Uh, there's a lot of uh, sailing to take in consideration, uh, uh, wind uh, direction and all that. So it's definitely going to be uh, more complicated than probably some of the other matches I did. But uh, if you want to have a final epic battle, you're going to have to have everything involved in it. you got to throw everything but the kitchen sink in there, right? So <laughs> uh, so let's get down to the table and let's see who uh, Juan and, uh, and uh, John here have uh, brought to the table uh, in this epic match. Okay, so we're gonna start over on John Morris's side. Um, so he's got the six rate, as I mentioned in the intro. Uh, I, what I forgot to mention in the intro was that the six rate has a uh, top speed of five, uh, and the galleon only has a top speed of four. So uh, the six rate is faster than the galleon, so there is also uh, an advantage as well. So, but anyways, so let's take a look and see who John has brought. So John Morris here is in the back. Looks like he has, uh, he's in a unit of freebooters. Uh, and then in the middle uh, over here, uh, one, actually there's four levels on, on a six rate. Second level down, uh, we have a unit of experienced uh, freebooters or uh, veteran freebooters, sorry. Uh, and uh, they got some of them up in the fighting top. So the same as the freebooters, we got some fighters in the tops here. Uh, and then moving over into the main deck, which is really loaded, <laughs> we have a unit of Sea Dogs and a unit of Enterpock uh, that are in the center here. Uh, so good sailors, uh, good at uh, firing the cannons, excellent boarders. Uh, and if you notice that all these units have uh, Braze of Pistols, uh, um, including actually uh, the last unit up at the very front, which is the Forlock Hope. Um, so virtually everybody in this ship has, uh, actually all of them do, have Braze of Pistols, which will come in handy uh, if the Spanish are coming to board. Uh, they can repel them with those pistols. Uh, it's a lot of uh, firepower that they can keep shooting every turn. So uh, That's the crew of the 6th Raid Frigate here at John Morris. So that's who he's brought. So let's go over to the other side of the table. Let's see if I can get over here. <laughs> and not get tangled. All right, uh, so over here, we get the Spanish Galleon. So it's top speed's four. So like I mentioned, it's a little bit uh, slower, um, but the Galleon does have uh, 28 guns. So it has more guns. Um, so it's 12 on each side, and then it's got the uh, two at the front, uh, two at the back. Six Raid has two at the front, two in the back as well, uh, but they only have nine on each side, so a little bit smaller. <clears throat> All right, so let's see who Juan's brought. Uh, he's got, uh, let's go to find out. Uh, in the back here, we have a unit of Miciano. So no, sorry, these are Corsarios, sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, he's got uh, a sharpshooter in there, so in that unit. Um, I represented him with this little red coat here, this guy right here. Okay, uh, and then down a level, we got Juan himself, uh, and he's got uh, Marinero, so he's got a, a unit of uh, those with him. Uh, then down into the main deck, we have a unit of European sailors uh, with uh, uh, Master Gunner uh, to help with those cannons. Uh, and then we got uh, some Miliciano Endos, uh, they got some up on the fire, firing top here, they got uh, uh, arrows. Uh, and then we got the uh, some down in the bottom there, so they got a little bit in the fire, fighting tops as well. And at the very front uh, of the ship here, we have the officer with uh, a really large unit of lanceros. So I think the Spanish are hoping to get aboard and uh, do some melee attacks with those lanceros and uh, do some damage there. So pretty much uh, there you go. That's uh, the Spanish set. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I am going to do the format a little different this time. We're just going to do the whole battle all in one video. So you guys don't have to worry for, uh, to wait for uh, different videos. We're just going to do it all together. So I'll still do a uh, beginning, middle, and end as usual. Uh, but uh, kind of uh, uh, just all kind of uh, bunched together. So you guys can uh, enjoy it all together in one. Uh, and you don't have to wait for all the videos to come. 
All right, so that's it. So we will see you in the round three. And let's see what happens. Okay, everyone, welcome back. We are in round three now, and uh, let's go take a look and see what's going on. Well, I think the best way to do this is I'm just going to take a look at the cards real quickly. So we've been uh, recording uh, where the cannon fire and damage has occurred. You can see that the uh, uh, fortitude of the six rate, this is the six rate card. Uh, you know, we're down to the end of five, so we're almost down to four. So it's, it's taken some hits from the Spanish Galleon. Um, and you can see it's fired all its cannons uh, on the one side here, a couple swivel guns already. Uh, and uh, the upper cannon up here, so that's how it kind of started. It shot off these two at the front. So did the Spanish galleon actually. They both were taking pot shots at each other from a distance, but uh, very little damage was done there, not until they got a little bit closer. Uh, but anyways, that's where the six rate is now. Uh, you can see there's a lot of reloading to do. <laughs> it may not occur, as you can see, we're just gonna pass the ships here. They already grappled together, so um, and the Spanish had to go and grapple onto that uh, six rate. Uh, uh, well, they had to, anyways, uh, because uh, they they did take some damage. So we're going to talk about that over here right now. So the Spanish galleon, you can see that they fired all their cannons up in this other corner here, uh, and again their front cannon. Uh, and uh, uh, you know the six rate kind of approached it from this way. Uh, so the galleon had a, the, kind of a blind spot. They used all their cannons there and uh, the 6 rate kind of stayed in that blind spot uh, because the uh, galleon didn't have time to reload all those guns out of theirs on that one corner there. So they kind of used that, let them fire their cannons. And the 6 rate did take some damage, but take a look how much damage the Spanish galleon has taken. So half of those ones on the 6 rate were uh, a partial broadside uh, and uh, they got uh, hit by those two heavy cannons on the one side and took re uh, significant damage, eight points damage from that uh, attack. They got hit by all the cannons on that one side. Uh, they all hit. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's funny, it did a lot more damage to the ship than it did to the crew. So more of the crew uh, actually managed to survive um, than uh, in those initial areas. But anyways, that's, it also started off with some bad luck by having uh, unsecured rigging. That was their event card right up the hop, so that was kind of unfortunate. So they got some damage there. Uh, sheets are shrouded there. Uh, and then they have uh, uh, a leak up at the front here too as well. So they took heavy damage right in here. Um, kind of uh, the 6 rig kind of just came around uh, along the side here and just uh, fired all its cannons. Uh, you know, went from the very front, and then eventually the back half of the ship was uh, in, a, in a single shot with a broadside. So um, that front compartment took a lot of damage on the galleon there. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you look at over here, the uh, wind gauge, uh, the wind is going kind of, uh, let's pull out a little bit, kind of you can see in this direction. So it kind of wasn't, uh, you know, maybe favored the six rate a little bit better at the beginning. Uh, the galleon just uh, tried to come out this way uh, and it was a little bit hampered by crossing into that wind. Um, you know, the galleon's a little bit slower and, and it took some damage to its rigging right away, which is unfortunate. Uh, but it kind of got over to this state. And if we look at over here, uh, the six rate kind of came over here uh, and over here it, it kind of made a turn and kind of followed the galleon this way. Uh, and that's where it uh, did several of those uh, those hits so just kind of ex trying to explain how uh, the sailing occurred here uh, so, so since the Spanish had taken so much damage uh, they went for the grapple and actually nailed it first time got to the back here and this is kind of where we're at on uh, the ships here so I kind of just kind of want to go what's going on in here what everybody's doing so the Casarios they're barely they were barely in the fight um, they've taken a couple shots from the back they've moved down one compartment um, mainly because most of the fighting is happening in the center here. Uh, you can see Juan himself. Uh, he's got uh, a little bit of his uh, half his uh, European sailors left. They've taken some pistol fire from the uh, sea dogs across the way there. Uh, and uh, so he's just kind of right in here. Uh, 
kind of took over the middle. So he also came down from this compartment. So everybody just kind of moved down to the center. Um, and in this front compartment, remember there was a huge uh, unit of Lanceros, but uh, I remember what I was talking about, all the damage that was taken in the front. Uh, I'm surprised there even is five Lanceros left in there. <laughs> to be honest, was all the damage that was taken. Uh, it's it's a miracle that uh, those guys are still in there, but uh, they've managed to get their uh, fatigue finally in check. They're down to one, uh, and they can actually uh, they might be, be an effective uh, force here. Now the Miliciana Endos, uh, they also had eight. Uh, the only four remaining are up in this fighting top. Uh, they also took some damage uh, from uh, the uh, uh, the six ray too. So. Uh, definitely uh, some uh, some melees going on in here. So, uh, kind of uh, let's go over to the other side. Let's see if I can get into frame on the other side of the six rate and see kind of where everybody else is on this side. Okay, so in the middle here uh, we have the uh, Forlorn Hope that's moved from the uh, front compartment here. They moved up to the middle here. Um, just kind of everybody's pushed down this way. Uh, and uh, you look at uh, um, the uh, ender plug are still over here. Uh, I think they only took one casualty in there. Uh, and uh, over here we got the sea dogs. So the sea dogs were in the center. They moved up here uh, to support over here. Um, if you look at, uh, at John Morris, he's up up at the front here, uh, and his uh, freebooters have taken a lot of damage. Uh, they have two fatigue, and uh, there is only uh, uh, three freeboaters and himself left, so he's got to watch out. So he may retreat out of there. I think uh, might be a good idea. You might want to stay in there before the uh, those guys come over and board. So, anyways, uh, and then the veteran freebooters. Uh, we still got some up in the fighting top here, and then we got some down in uh, in uh, this deck as well. So kind of that's where we're at. Uh, uh, you know the six rate. Uh, I mean, the Spanish galleon is in kind of a in a pickle. Like, do they, you know do they keep uh, pressing the fight, or do they break away? Uh, they do have more cannons still not fired off, so there's an opportunity there to to shoot the six rate uh, at, at a distance. Uh, and the six rate has this you know whole side here that hasn't been used. Uh, so, but they would have to get around before it can fire. So the Spanish galleon would have an advantage there. Uh, but the galleon has taken a lot of a lot of damage, so it's hard to say what's going to go on here. Uh, we'll have to see uh, how this plays out. But anyways, that's where we are for the third round. Uh, when we come back, it'll be the conclusion of this battle. All right, see you guys then. Okay, welcome back everyone uh, to the conclusion of this battle between John Morris and Juan Corso. So let's go uh, check out what happened. So, uh, you know, in the last one we were talking about maybe the ships separating, uh, but I think the Spanish decided uh, that uh, their best course of action was to press the fight on the decks. Uh, and for a time that seemed like the, the wise decision to do because uh, Juan did capture the back deck uh, and the Spanish did get over to the English frigate. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, this is kind of where the units ended up. If you take a look over here, uh, Juan Corso got, uh, repelled back to the center of the galleon, uh, and he's in, uh, melee attack here. Uh, the Casarios and, uh, the Marineros, Juan's Marineros, are in a battle with the Forlorn Hope here. Um, so that's kind of where they ended up. So the English are over on the Spanish ship. But the Spanish are still over on the English side, so uh, John Morris wasn't exactly in, uh, he was in uh, some somewhat peril as well. Uh, as you can see, the, the Lanceros and English, uh, sorry, European sailors were still uh, kind of got uh, John Morris pinned over here with his freebooters uh, and one interplog. Uh, so kind of what happened is they came over here, the interplog had to retreat uh, because of fatigue. They uh, retreated over to the deck here and the Lanceros and uh, European sailors followed them uh, through. Uh, and that's kind of where there's another melee going on in the middle of the English deck. Uh, the only unit that really is kind of ineffective it was the veteran freebooters. Uh, they lost one, one, one unit, uh, so one model. 
but they have the other seven still there. They still control the fighting top up here. And they were just taking pot shots, uh, <laughs> causing havoc. Uh, so there was still a whole uh, unit of veteran freebooters here. Um, so that's pretty much what happened. Uh, the as you can see, the Sea Dogs uh, were defeated. So that's kind of how Juan got over here in the first place. He got over to this deck. Um, the uh, Casarios did an eight-point hit on uh, the Sea Dogs that are on the back here and uh, devastated them. They were only down to three, and then the Marineros came over with Juan. Uh, and uh, I mean, the Sea Dogs had so much fatigue; uh, and they were easy pickings for them. And that's how they captured that deck. Uh, and then from there, you know, the European sailors also followed over and the Lanceros, and they're still over here. Uh, but uh, Juan had to retreat over to, uh, again, over to the other side there. Uh, so as far as uh, casualties go, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, English side, uh, the ship hull was, uh, Fortitude was still uh, at five, just barely, but it's still at five. Um, and they lost uh, their sea dogs, so that's the uh, only unit that uh, perished uh, in their force here. Uh, let's go look over at the Spanish side and see how much damage they suffered. So over here, uh, the galleon did take a lot more damage. As you can see, the uh, fortitude was down to three uh, and uh, almost nearly got to two, so they took a lot more cannon fire which uh, led to the boarding in the first place. Uh, I don't think the Galleon probably would have kept them at bay and tried to use more of their guns because they still had uh, lots of guns here uh, that they could have uh, utilized to uh, uh, do some damage to that frigate before they even had to board it. But uh, that's not the case. They got they connected it when they did and uh, they decided to go with a boarding attack uh, to try to do, defeat the English. Um, so they also lost the unit, uh, the Militia Indos uh, were the only casualty, uh, well, unit that was completely destroyed anyways on the Spanish side. Um, and But uh, looking at overall, uh, the galleon did suffer more damage. And if we go to models, so uh, the uh, Spanish lost 35 models uh, to the English over here, um, they lost uh, uh, 25 models. So. All in all, uh, the English uh, takes this one. Um, you know, we were playing the encounter scenario, so the objective is to try to do as much damage to your opponent as possible. So uh, the Spanish Galleon took more damage and their crew took more casualties. Uh, so uh, we're gonna give this one to John Morris as the uh, victor. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this uh, epic battle between these two Titans here. Uh, I look forward to uh, using these guys again. I'm sure uh, these two ships will meet each other again with different crews, different captains, uh, and uh, there'll be many years of fun to, to have with uh, these two, uh, two uh, beasts of a ships. <laughs> they were a lot of fun to play with. All right, uh, so moving on to our next episode. Uh, kind of uh, thinking that maybe uh, I'll do a generic uh, tutor style uh, more into the crafting uh, area, uh, building a Tudor style, uh, that's the architecture design of a building, 17th century, uh, you know, I could carry over to any century, but I want to use it for uh, Blood and Plunder, uh, you could use it for Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and you can use it for, I want to use it for Blood and Valor, uh, just kind of like a generic uh, a Tudor style 17th century two-story kind of building and I think that would be uh, fun to do on, on video. I've built them in the past but I've never done it on, on video. Uh, so that's uh, the plans for the next one. Uh, we'll do that. Don't worry, we're still going to get to the plantation and, and maybe I can use that Tudor style building in the plantation. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, I want to do that uh, World War uh, One Zeppelin crash Zeppelin uh, scene as well, and that uh, building also can be carried over onto that setup too. So I think it's a good place to start. It kind of covers all the different areas, uh, and uh, gives you guys a crafting of a of a building out of uh, out of insulation foam and dollar store foam board and popsicle sticks and all those kinds of stuff that we're going to use to build a, a structure. All right, so that's it for this episode. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this. Uh, if you uh, liked what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you uh, smash that like button. Uh, and...